At least when I was in my addiction, um, I would always find a way to get what I needed at that moment. And when we see financial wellness, um, is satisfaction with current and future? You know, I understand that today. I, I, I may reach it later on today, but right now I'm ready. I understand what change is. It was real, uh, it, was, it was me. You know, I had changed before, but I didn't make more change. Uh, that's rough. That, that's rough. And, and trying to look at, look at my fellow, fellow members uh, and say, hey, uh, yeah, check that out. Yeah, you know, they, what we were talking about for a long time was like, change we must or die we will. So I had to explain, listen, I'm trying to have people notice that when you're describing one thing, even if this is the focus, the other ones are there, and they're still kind of tied in. So, <laughs> this was very, I believe that this was the beginning. Spiritual wellness was the beginning. Um, I, I would say, okay, my, they say in recovery, whatever you're recovering from, you have to have a spiritual awakening. Mm -hmm. Basically, with me, that worked a lot through my higher power. Being born heroin cocaine addicted with a deformity in my eyes from my father's own bad choices, putting, being put in seven foster homes, mm -hmm. used and abused as a sex, sex object, and um, a worker, you know, with sheets from six, six o'clock in the morning, all the sheets, the homeschool. We didn't even get homeschooled. We, they didn't let us go to school. We did homeschooling, yeah. which was no home. Satisfied with their current um, financial situation. I'm just satisfied with the fact that even if I don't have a whole bunch of money yes, stashed away every day that I put to another um, part and you accept the fact that no, I'm not financially where I would really like home. to be, but I'm grateful for where I right. am. Right. And yeah, right. sometimes I might not have the, I'm, I get tired of add some checks. I got to pay bills and I'm, you know, I only got a little bit of money left to the next check. But you, you, you grow from, you know, you get from a state, because there's been a, a point in my life where I didn't have anything. Exactly. I didn't have anything at all. So That's when right. you've been there, when you get the little bit that you do get, you're grateful and you right. learn how to sustain it and put it in. So, seven for less. I strive for more yes. and for better. Even though I, I just graduated with my bachelor's degree and I went right back to school and I'm in the master's program. So in order to deserve better, and I have a 13-year-old son, you have to strive for better. You know, even though right now I'm living paycheck to paycheck, like she said, I didn't even have a paycheck. I used to walk the streets, you know, a couple of 24. You know, but just being grateful, I can go over my refrigerator. Because I want to be able to pay for my own funeral. I want to leave some property to my children. So when I pass, they can go ahead and have amongst themselves so that they can carry on, you know. But I do remember when I've had to... I was uh, 21 years old and in college, um, and he called me on my, my 21st birthday. Um, and, and told me that he was going to go drinking. It's called service master. I was very young before, I think. Yeah, young before. I used to clean my Two hands went up for us at a time. Who's going? We got the same and emotionally and have used both of our strength from our experience of what we went through to overcome and to keep going. So many different emotions that you think at some point that you've gotten through or or have that you 
We might not have that experience or feel that way anymore, but it was so emotional telling her my story, even though it was, and it was from the heart. It, it was like I had relived it. It was just yesterday. That you know, I'm older, a lot older, but, but I bet she's been through the same things I've been and where I'm at now because of my age. So we connected with that, with family and, and having children. And grand, I have grandchildren. Children, so she would connect because she's right behind me. You know? yeah. Once it got the yeah. flow in, yeah. it, it was it was it was just like natural. Yeah. Yeah. It, it didn't matter if it was a guy or it was a, mm -hmm. an older man, a younger man. It mm -hmm. was just it was my story, and there's mm -hmm. no wrong. It, right. Nobody can say my story was mm -hmm. wrong right. or what. It's my story. That's how I lived. And Dang, come on, <laughs> just fell out. Yep. You're up. Okay, I'm up. All right. I didn't know where to start with my story because it was like a little cop guy, but um, it, was no, <laughs> it was nowhere compared to Abby's story. Her story was like so compelling and so strong compared to like my story. I just feel I was so compelled by her story, and like I don't know how like she even made it through like with in her life like she. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because her story let me know the struggles of addiction, how you get entrapped in addiction, in basically chemical addiction, and it winds up being physical. How um, you feel like that's the only way that you can survive. Uh, he's, he looked like the way I looked at it, you get some guy that was like stalking him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> already, already hooked on this, and then he found found his job, and then he got hooked on that, and I don't know. Then that's when it is everything started leaving out of his life. You know, and then he, for some odd reason, God spoke, and he said, "Man, if it wasn't for this guy, I don't think I'd even be here." You know, maybe, maybe like you said, great story because just to hear him talk and the struggles that he had. You know, he lost the job uh, to to using it and his addiction and stuff, and then just struggling to make sense out of things, mm -hmm. and just working hard to uh, try to put his life back together and not, not quite getting it. We didn't get the recovery part, because I think that's three minutes or just two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but just to hear his struggle and stuff, it, you know, it just, it just brings back the pain. You know? Sarah, at you? Yo. Yeah. Yeah. No. It was very nice sharing her stories. We, she is 24, 24, she's 24. the same, oh, exact same age as my son. So that immediately bonds me with her. Then we actually have significant age difference, but we both had a lot in common of the beginning of our lives, which was pretty tumultuous, and we both survived it. And sharing that with her was actually very helpful. And I hope I was helpful to her, knowing that you can't get through it. With the rights of the eyes children. of my children, and um, you know, I'm, I'm just hoping that you know I can better tell my story to help someone later. Right. <laughs> no, it was, it was very powerful to both share my story and my experiences, but also to hear somebody else's story and their experiences. Um, I really appreciated Tanya sharing her story with me. Um, I'm here storytelling training to. I. I, I I was in a bad relationship, and through this bad relationship, um, it caused me to experience some pain that I had never felt before. Um, and through this time, I began to use. When I used, I lost everything that I, I that I had: my job, my house, my car, and I was homeless. I went. I knew that I needed to get help. I went into a facility. Um, where, and I went into a recovery house after that because I had nothing. Um, I went um, from having a job to being on welfare, didn't know how to gather that together. Um, after I got into the recovery house, I wound up having two strokes. Um, I left the recovery house, I went home with my daughters. It took me two years to get myself together physically and mentally. Um, mentally, I was totally messed up. I cried for a whole year. I couldn't stop myself from crying. I wound up going um, further into some therapy, and um, as I continued to 
um, get the therapy, um, I began to restore my faith in myself because I had totally lost. I thought I was useless, worthless, and I just really didn't care anything about myself any longer. Um, at that point, um, the therapy really helped me to regain and restore my, 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 my sense of pride and respect for myself. Um, then I applied for a position at a shelter for women um, that had had some of the same experiences that I had had. And this particular lady gave me the opportunity to um, come in and, and, and begin to work and restore my work ethic again. Um, and to it, it, it restored my confidence. Um, it, it built me up and, and let me know that I am still somebody because um, being in that particular um, relationship had totally tore me down. It took every breath of body, everything in me that was there before. It took everything from me. So um, um, I've been clean for five years, Woo. going on six. Mm -hmm. It'll be six um, in October. Um, I work for the Mental Health Association now. Um, I'm a recovery coach. Um, I'm, my plans in the next five years is to get a degree. Um, I just want to continue to better myself, to continue to help others. I love helping people. Um, and I always want people to know that no matter how far down they feel or go, they can always come back up. Mm. So um, that's my story. Yay. <laughs>